President Trump won the 2016 election in part by drawing a lot of people to the polls who don't normally vote. Now, one of the data masterminds who was an integral part of the Trump campaign team is launching a new organization to find more of those kinds of voters and keep them involved in the political process. Matt Brainerd joins us from Washington this morning. Matt, uh, tell us about Look Ahead America. Thanks, I'm glad to be here. Look at America is a team of over 30 former Trump campaign staff. And we've gathered to form a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that's registering and turning out and educating disaffected American voters. There are millions of them across the country who've lost faith in our institutions, they've grown cynical. And the worst symptom of that is that they just have not registered to vote or they've registered through some incidental means and they don't show up to vote. And we're here to address that, to make sure that their voices aren't just heard, but heeded in Washington and the other halls of power around the country. Explain how you find these voters. How do you reach out to them when they're so perhaps disconnected from the political process already? Well, we have a database of millions, in, in many states, millions of unregistered adults. We've build this through commercial files and other technology that we have access to. We subtract the voter file from it so we know who's not registered. And we're able to use psychometric mapping, our own modeling techniques, to determine who among these people are patriotic, disaffected Americans. And then it comes down to old-fashioned community organizing mixed with new-fashioned social media targeting and marketing. Yeah, the and we're able to reach these people where they are, speaking their language, and engage them in the civic process, engage them in voting, engaging them in registering to vote, learning about where candidates stand on the issues that are relevant to them, and then turning them out. And no one else is doing it. The, these are folks who are very hard to reach. These are people who are disaffected. They're, they've got rural or blue-collar backgrounds. Uh, the voices they hear in Washington don't resonate with them, don't pay attention to the issues they care about, and we're here to change that. And you mentioned psychometric data. This is something the Obama campaigns of 08 and 12 sort of pioneered and perfected. How did the Trump campaign uh, gain the upper hand and flip the script on psychometrics? Well, uh, now the C3 is a nonpartisan group, but just putting on my consultant hat and telling you about the, old, the good old campaign days, uh, we were able to gain access to the Obama campaigns or Obama expert psychometric data through one of our vendors. So after the 2008-2012 campaign, they left those individuals and started a company. And we were able to gain access to that data and help us drove our decisions through the primary in terms of every door we knocked on, every phone we dialed, every robocall we placed, every piece of mail we sent, was all driven in part by that data, helping us reach these people who had a tremendous affinity for our candidate, President Trump, but did not have a habit of voting. Voting was just not part of their culture. And through as many as a dozen contacts with them, we pestered them into the voting box. And that paid off tremendous dividends. And for those who don't know, can you explain sort of what psychometric data is? This is stuff that you guys can gather from what people post on social media, but uh, what exactly is that psychometric data? Well, it comes from a variety of sources. There are a lot of commercial databases that track individuals' actions. There's a lot of opportunity for data mining on social media and elsewhere, um, as well as doing one-off profiling, where if we know an awful lot about one individual and there's another individual who looks a lot like that person in many other demographics, we can make assumptions because there tends to be similarity or tends to be homogeneity among people with similar characteristics and similar traits. It's a very complicated science, but the data is out there, it's commercially available. We're just applying it. Normally it gets applied to likely voter universes for purposes of persuasion. We're applying it towards identifying patriotic Americans who've become dis disaffected and cynical so we can engage them on issues that are relevant to them, get them registered, get them educated, and turn them out to vote. We've seen extremism rearing its ugly head lately. What happens if you're able to identify potential voters but you do see some extremism there, perhaps white supremacism, things like that? Is a vote a vote or are you guys going to try and keep those people separate? I'm going to quote the president on that. And he said that when you open your heart to patriotism, there's no room for bigotry. And what a risk is of these disaffected patriotic American demographic is if they grow so cynical 
and they grow so disconnected from the civil institutions that bind us together, like everybody going and voting on election day and making their voices heard. When they become disconnected and they believe that nobody can hear their voices, they become much more susceptible to being lured away by the Pied Pipers of uh, racial extremism. So we're actually the antidote to that. Patriotism, the flag, our issues, the Constitution, this is what brings us back together. And this is, I think, what the President was saying. And this, this is the antidote towards that um, divisiveness, because everybody can salute the flag. Everybody can put their hands over the heart when the national anthem is sung. And that's what brings us together, and that is the core driving ideology of this organization. And tell us what your operation will look like on the ground here in New Hampshire. Well, uh, as Phil Graham said in 1995, uh, money is the mother's milk of politics, and we're very much in fundraising mode right now to expand to different states. Our pilot program, program is in Virginia, but Vir New Hampshire is going to be one of the, probably the state we advance to next. We've identified maybe 15,000 inactive voters who are, we would call, consider disaffected patriotic Americans, and potentially uh, 100,000 or more. Um, who are unregistered adults that we're going to reach out to. So what we bring to the table is something that really hasn't been done before, where we're going to bring uh a kind of community organizing that's typically uh, the province of the left, door operations, tabling at community events, along with much more sophisticated operations such as social media targeting and online targeting uh, to reach these people. So I anticipate us having a couple, two or three field offices in New Hampshire, probably a dozen staff members, an army of volunteers, and all the best data that's available and you talk to about drive the, our decisions, yeah. to get us to meet people where they are. You talk about the best and, data. And speak and to them in their language. Because Sorry, Matt, oh, just really far. quick, yeah, the, the, uh, the question being, if you are able to get these people with the best data, things like that, on the flip side of that, are you able to also try to stop voter fraud because you can actually identify those things as well? Yeah, so our primary objective is voter registration, voter education, and turnout. However, in the process of that and within the laws of every state, it's as important that re elections are run cleanly and as equally important is that the perception that elections are run clear, cleanly. Um, so we're going to be looking at vote history to make sure that we have not, we can't identify or look for the potential to identify any fraudulent votes that may have been cast. Because in the process of doing what we're doing, it gives us access to a lot of to data that can be used for different purposes. Among them, um, reviewing vote history to determine if people have voted who shouldn't have, as well as election day monitoring to make sure the elections are run cleanly. Um, a lot of our team have experience with this, and in states where it's permitted, we'll observe polls because it's in everybody's best interest uh, that the day of the election, regardless of the outcome, that we can all say, okay, that was a clean election. Mm -hmm. And in terms of being able to replicate, uh, you the most important driver of these patriotic, disaffected Americans, as you call them, was President Trump in the last election. He was able to just communicate and bring these people out. How do you replicate that uh, without being able to work directly with the president this time around? Well, like I said, we're a nonpartisan organization. So what we've got to do is basically two things. First, educate these voters in terms of what's at stake, what the differences are between various candidates. They have to ultimately make that decision themselves, but things like voter guides, candidate forums, uh, email newsletters, just educating them on the issues and where the candidates stand. But beyond that, we've also got to educate them on technical matters, such as where is your polling place? What are the hours they're open? Hey, uh, you can't vote on Tuesday because you work two shifts and you have three kids. Well, guess what? You can vote absentee via paper in New Hampshire uh, if you meet the circumstances. Or in other cases, you can vote early by showing up you know, on the Saturday before the Tuesday of the election. So just letting them know about the, you know, introducing them to the culture of voting and the options that are available to them will do wonders in terms of turnout in, in a demographic that just doesn't think there's a point to voting because there's, there's nobody that can hear their voices and they've just grown so cynical that they've dropped out disconnected. All right, Matt Brainerd, Executive Director of Look Ahead America. Thanks for joining us this morning. We appreciate it.